Dr. Ben Spencer. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And it's um, always a pleasure to follow such a powerful speech uh, from my honourable friend, the member for Wickham. I think today's debate is fundamentally about uncertainty. Uncertainty over Omicron. It looks spooky. Um, it seems to be outperforming other variants in Africa. Why? Who knows? Um, we don't know if it's going to be more harmful, less harmful. Uh, we just don't know. So we, ha we are facing uncertainty around what's the situation going to be with Omicron. But the problem with these restrictions today is also uncertainty. Um, now, in terms of their direct effect, they are certainly not trivial. Um, they're going to batter the international travel sector, which has already taken absolute battering over the past two years, and yet again have a disproportionate impact on children. Uh, when we see the collapse of bubbles at schools because of Omicron, when we see that it's our children who are having to wear face masks, disproportionate high rates in terms of what they do compared to, compared to adults. So yet again, children are going to be the most effective. Uh, and sadly, I think this has been the story of the pandemic thus far. But the real harm from these restrictions is the, here we go again. And that's how I felt uh, when the 5 p.m. press conference on a Saturday was announced again. It was in a, in a click of a finger, I was back to 2020. And I think everyone at home watching, everyone at home seeing what was happening, was starting to worry what's going to come next. Here we go. Is this the start of the ratchet again? Moving mono, uh, monotonously, inexorably to higher and increasing restrictions. And it's that chilling effect which the, uh, my honourable friend, the member for Winchester, said. I think he, he puts it exactly right. It's that chilling effect that does the most harm and is doing the most harm. Uh, immediately, I started thinking, right, well, you know, should we hold off from ordering the, the booze in for my 40th birthday party in a couple of weeks? Should we just, just wait to see what, what happens? Uh, and, you know, the stories of countless events um, it, that we are already and we anticipate going to be cancelled. Let's hold off on making clear arrangements about seeing our parents for Christmas. Let's just hold off from ordering the goose or the turkey for Christmas. And all of this has a impact and a snowballing impact. And I remember, I think many people remember, when it was just three weeks to flatten that curve. Just three weeks. And God forbid, heaven forbid, that people at home, because of this chilling effect, are saying to themselves, you know what, actually, that lump I found, let's not bother those GPs. Yeah, they're too busy. Too much to deal with with COVID. I think this is a, a serious and severe concern. But I'd argue that there is a final uncertainty, and one which gives me the most trouble, is how much we will really know in three weeks' time. We know from infection, it takes three weeks to get to hospitalisation. From hospitalisation, it takes three weeks to get to death. We've only just started finding our domestic uh, uh, Omicron cases. Are we going to know from our domestic data, really in three weeks' time, what on earth Omicron is doing, what it looks like, how, how transmissible it is, and the impact on our NHS? Can we really compare international data uh, to us? We, we've had a phenomenal vaccine rollout. We celebrate the impact of our vaccine rollout on the booster dose far better um, than, than many other nations. Are we really comparable in terms of that, whatever data ends up coming out across the world? So I'm really uncertain that we will know in three weeks' time what's going to happen and what our next steps, if anything, should be. Now, in the face of this uncertainty that all of us are feeling, where can we find confidence? And I would argue here. Here is where the public find confidence. Because they see us standing here debating and scrutinising, raising their points, raising their concerns, chewing over to the most minute detail the SIs that have been forward, challenging the Minister on why we are doing what we're doing, having a great debate uh, across the House on these issues. Uh, they see this. And they have confidence that whatever we're doing going forwards, whatever impact we're having on people's day-to-day -day lives, we have scrutinised that we are here representing them and we are making sure we make the best possible decisions. 
And we've got some big decisions to take in three weeks. And I do worry about what's going to happen then. Will the data from Omicron be bad? Will it be good? Or will it be not sure? Parliament must be able to debate this. Being recalled, if necessary, or better yet, not uh, going into recess until we have the data so we know what our next steps should or shouldn't be. And in terms of ending uncertainty for me, I'd be very grateful if the Minister, in her summing up speech, could give certainty that Parliament will have its say whatever happens in two or three weeks' time, two or three weeks time in terms of response to the Omicron or whatever variant uh, that may pop up between now and then.